will save the children of the day? Will it be you? Will it be you? Who will save the children of the day? Will it be you? Will it be you? We're all God's children, yeah! 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 He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Will say of the Lord, He shall be my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the precious pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall. Take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor by the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is your refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give you wings and charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample under feet, because he has set his love upon thee. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him when in trouble. to capital lessons. Hello my wonderful children, I'm here again with another interesting science lesson. My name is Ernest Atto Bento. My children, I believe you are all doing great, good. We are here again to learn something new in science today. All the things that we have around us can be grouped into three. Some are called solid some are called liquids and some are called gases 
and today in this lesson we are going to look at one of them and how they look like so my children the lesson for today is on properties of solids properties of solids when you hear solids what are they and how what do they look like and that is what we are going to look at today in this lesson properties of solids when you were in basic one we learned about the state of matter that is solid liquid gas and we went through so many examples today we are going to go more or deal more with solids so that anytime you see any object around or anything around you can say that this is solid based on what i learned about them but before we continue let's mark the homework i gave you the last time on properties of materials properties of materials by creating that homework you were asked to choose the properties listed below to name the object so you use the properties here to name the object here we have umbrella here we have a school bag we have a bowl with some vegetables inside and we have belt so we are going to arrange these properties to suit the objects we have here so the first one is umbrella and what is the property of an umbrella we have opaque we have transparent bendable and waterproof so the first answer is waterproof umbrella is waterproof because when it rains water cannot pass through it so we normally use it during the raining season so that you will not be beaten by the rain so anything water cannot pass through we call it waterproof the next one is school bag so we have opaque we have transparent we have bendable so what would be the right answer to describe the property of a school bag the answer is opaque opaque means that you cannot see through so as this bag is here i don't know what is in this bag whether there are two pencils four books whether there is a lunch box inside i don't know because i can't see through the bag and if you can't see through something we call it opaque so we are left with two the bowl here and then the belt here and the answers we have transparent we have bendable so if you see the bowl here what property will you use to describe the bowl here because i can see something inside the bowl so the answer is transparent the bowl is transparent so i can see that there are some vegetables inside this bowl so the answer is transparent and the last one which is the belt will be bendable it means you can bend it without breaking so you see that the belt is called without breaking it the belt is called without breaking it. so these are the answers to the assignments that you were given and i believe you all had the answers correct if you all had the answers correct i will give you a toffee anytime you meet me collect your toffee i'll also look at your work i'll follow you and go and look at your work and then i'll give you your toffee you have all done well now let's move to today's topic on properties of solids properties of solids kate if you pay attention and then we all go through this lesson at the end of the lesson you'll be able to describe what solids are when i ask you what are solids you'll be able to tell me and the next one is that you can state four properties of solids four properties of solids so pay attention and let's all go through this lesson and I believe at the end you will enjoy what you will learn. Good. Now, let's begin. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, all the things we see around or use are grouped into three. These are solid, liquid, and then gas. All the things around us. When you wake up in the morning, you wash your face with water. It is liquid. You use 
toothbrush. It is solid. You bath with water. It is liquid. When you are going to school, after taking your bath, you take some breakfast. You can even take tea or milo, which is liquid. Or you can also take porridge, which is also liquid. You can take bread, which is also solid. If you take your school uniform, your school uniform is solid. The shoe that you wear or the boots you wear to school, they are solid. Your pencil, your book, they are all solid. All the things that are around us or we use them are grouped into three solid liquid and gas and in this lesson we are going to look at solid for today in the next lesson we will look at liquid and then we will look at gas so we are going to talk about solid what is a solid what is a solid a solid is something that has a fixed shape size and takes space so when i say something is solid it means it has fixed shape so if you see this shape here this shape here is what good triangle this shape here is what circle this shape here is what rectangle so you see that you can see the shape of these objects and this makes them solid they have sizes they have sizes some can be big if you look at this triangle this triangle is bigger than this one the orange one is bigger than this one so they have sizes they have sizes and they can take space see that they have taken i have white space here but right now because of the objects i have placed here i can't see the white space in this area so they have taken the space here so solid takes space they have sizes whether big or small, and they have shapes. So these are what we call solid. Solid. So let's look at examples of solid. So the eraser you use at school is a solid. The shape is what? Rectangle. You use a pencil. The pencil is round. You use book. The book is rectangle. They are all solid. You have bread. The bread is what rectangle. We have clock here, a circle or round. We have plate here is also round. They all have shapes. They take they can be big or small. So these are what we call solids. You also have sugar. Sugar is also solid. Sugar is also solid. We have salt. Is also solid. We have Gary. It's also solid. You may ask that why is a book solid and then Gary is also solid. And that is what we are going to talk about today in our lesson. The properties of solids. Now let's move to properties of solids. You saw that some solids are very hard. Others too are grainy like the sugar and the gary but we call all of them solids so what are the properties of solids when we say properties of solids what do we mean properties of solids means what solids have properties of solids means what solids have children let me give you an example when you go to school you have your school bag what is inside your school bag you have your pencil inside your school bag, you have your eraser inside your school bag, you have your books with your name written on it inside your school bag. These are your properties. So when your friend sees your book on another friend's table, they can pick the book and bring it to you that this is your book because this is your property. You have them. When you come to the house, you know the shoe that belongs to your dad. You know the dresses that belongs to your dad. Even in the house, our fathers have their special chairs they sit on at the hall. Or they have a particular chair 
they sit on at the hall. Your father may have a car. These are all properties of your father because that is what your father have. Let's take a car. Some of the properties of a car. A car has a tie. A car has an engine. A car has seats inside and when you enter the car, you sit on the seat. So if I go to the classroom, I know my chair or the seat I sit on in class and I know the seat I also sit on in my father's or mother's car. So if I see the seat anywhere, I can see that no, this, is, this seat belongs to a car. This seat belongs to a seat we use in the classroom. So the things about the car, the tie, the engine and the seat, they are properties of the car. If you see them anywhere, you will know that this thing belongs to a car. And when we talk about properties, that is what we mean. So, properties of solid means what solid have. What you also have are your properties. So, what are some of the things that if we see, we, we will see that, oh, this thing belongs to solid. Because of this, we call them solid. Because of your name you have at the back of your book, all your friends know that this book belongs to you. In the same way, when we talk about properties of solid, when you see something about any object, you can see that these are solid. So let's go through some of the properties of solid. So that anywhere you see any of the properties, you will see that, oh, based on what I learned on Capdale, I see that this is solid. So let's go to property one. The first one is that some solids are hard and some are soft. So not all solids are hard. When we say something is solid, it means it's hard, but not all of them are hard. Some are hard like this. So you see the ball, you can press it, nothing will happen to it because it is hard. It is hard. And if we look at the small pillow there that one is soft so you can press it and it we can squeeze it you see it so that is soft but they are all solid so the pillow that, that you sleep on is solid but it is soft the bed the wooden bed is hard that one too is solid the wall at school or at home you can just touch the wall. You can see that it is hard. It is solid. So solid, some of them are hard. Some are soft. Your school uniform, the dress I'm wearing is soft, but it is solid. Your school uniform is soft, but it is solid. Your hanky that you use, they are solid, but they are soft. The pencil that you use, they are hard. They are solid. So let's look at some examples of solids that are soft. The first one is teddy bear. Do you have one at home? Yes, I have a teddy bear at home. Very nice one. I hope you also have one. Uh -huh. So teddy bear, is it hard or soft? They are soft. Teddy bears are soft, but they are solid. You all use tissue paper at home, and they are soft. They are soft, but they are solid. You all use towel. When you finish taking your bath, you use towel to dry yourself. They are soft, but they are solid. The next one is hanky. Hanky. They are also soft. We use it to wipe our face. When we are sweating or anything, we have anything on our face, we use the hanky to wipe. They are all soft. So when we say soft, you see here, they are very soft. You can even press it and it will go up, down and then up. They are what soft. So these are examples of solids that are soft. So look around you. The stuffing chair you sit at home, at hall, they are solid. But you see that they are soft. You sit on it and you feel comfortable. The kitchen stool that is found at the kitchen, they are hard. But they are also solid. And then... Let's look at 
examples of solids that are hard. So this cup, this cup is hard. The pencil is hard. It is not soft. It is hard. You hold it and then write in your book. This stone is also solid. It is hard. This chair you sit on at school is also solid. It is hard. So kids, okay, remember that when we talk about property, some of the things that solids have is that some solids are soft. Some are hard. So remember that. Let's go to the next one. Property 2. The first one is that solids, some are soft and some are hard. That is the first property. Let's go to property 2. A solid has its own shape. And you can hold them. You can hold them. So let's look at the shapes here. We have triangle here. We have circle here. We have square. The green is square. The yellow one here is rectangle. We have another triangle here. They have shape and you can hold them. You can hold your school uniform. You can hold your pencil. You can hold your spoon. You can hold your plates. They are all solid. They have shapes and you can hold them. If you look at these dice, do you, do you like Ludo? This is a dice. We use it to play Ludo. And this is square. And it is solid. Our shirt, we have fastings called buttons. I have a button here. I have a button here. A round one. And it is solid because I can hold it. When I'm undressing, I just open the button through the button hole. When I'm dressing too, I close it. So the button here is solid and it is round. They have shape. The book here is solid. It is rectangle. They have shape. So solid have shapes. They have shapes. So remember that. That is property two. The first one is that some are hard, some are soft. The second one is that they have shapes. So look at this cone hat too. I hope you have worn this before. During Christmas, you see, or during a, any festival. You see, so this is also solid. And uh, it has a cone shape. This clock is round. It is solid. And it is round in shape. This bread is rectangle in shape. And it is solid. You can hold it. I can hold the hat here. I can hold the clock here. I can hold the bread here. They are all solid and they have shapes. So remember that they have shapes and we can hold them. Property 3. The first one, some are hard, some are soft. The second property, they have shapes and we can hold them. Let's look at 3. A solid has its own size. The size may be big or small. So a solid may have big size or a small size. So if you look at your school, if you look at your school, you may all wear the same uniform. I said your school uniform are solid, but they are soft. You see that the school uniform the KG people wear, or the KG children wear, you see that you are in class too. And your school uniform is bigger than the one your junior brother or sister in KG wears because you are a big girl. If you look at your shoe, your father's shoe is bigger than your shoe and they are all solid. So when you talk about solid, some are big and some are small. So if you look at this ball, we have a big ball here and we have a small ball here. They are all solid. But in solid, some are big, some are small. Some are big. So if you go to store, you see a lot of shoes there many shoes there and you see that some are big for children some are uh, some are small for children and some are big for our big brothers and sisters or mommy and then daddy so remember that some are big some are small so the first one we said that solid some are hard some are soft the second one is that solids have shapes and we can hold them the third one here is that solids, they have their own sizes. Some are big and some are small. Some are big, some are small. Let's look at the next one. A solid will keep its shape and size unless you do something to change it. 
So they have their own size and shape. But you cannot change the shape unless you do something to it. And that is solid. You cannot change the shape and size unless you do something to it. So let's look at some of the things that when you do to solid, it can change their shape and size. Look at this. This is a small metal and it is square. So hammer, if we use hammer on solids, it can change the shape and size of the solid, like this one. So you see, the hammer has changed this square object to a flat object by using hammer. Without using hammer, the shape will be the same. So one is hammer. Hammer can change the shape of a solid. The second one is heat. Is heat or fire. Look at this candle here. Without heat, it is solid. Nothing has happened to it. But when we light the candle, it will melt. It will change the shape of the candle. It will melt. So heating also changes the shape of solid. One is by using hammer. If I have a stone here and I use hammer, it will break into pieces. It will change the shape and the size. The size will be particles, small, small ones. And the shape too will change. And heat can also change the shape of a solid. Let's look at another one. By cutting. By cutting, you can change the shape of a solid. By cutting. So this bread is rectangle. We are, we are going to have breakfast. So mommy is cutting the bread so that we can all get a slice. And by cutting, we change the shape of the bread. The bread will no more be full rectangle. The bread will no more be full rectangle. Me, I will tell mommy, I like three of the slides. I like three. I can eat three. How many can you eat? I can eat three. So by cutting, by cutting, you can change the shape. So the first one is that if you use hammer, you can change the shape of the solid. If you use fire, you can change the shape of the solid. If you cut, you can cut with a knife or scissors. Any cutting can change the shape of the solid. Let's look at the last one. By squashing, you see, watermelon is round. And by squashing, it's changing the shape. The shape changes. The tie run over. As you saw, and it changed the shape. See? It has changed the shape and the size. So it is no more round again. The watermelon is no more round again. So what I want you to learn is that if solids are there, they will maintain their shape. Nothing will happen to them unless you do something to it. So they have their size and they have their shape. Until you do something to it, it will never change. And some of the things that can change the shape and size of a solid is that by hammering, using hammer, by using heat. If I have a charcoal and then I use it to make fire, you see that they will all turn to ashes. It will change the shape and then the size of the charcoal. It will change it into powder. And then if you also cut with either knife or scissors, you change the shape. And by squashing it, you also change the shape. So this is another property. Nothing will happen to it unless you do something to it to change the shape. That is solid. Nothing will happen to it unless you change the shape. And these are some of the things you can do to change the shape. By hammering, by using fire on the solid, by cutting, and then by squashing. Like how the car is squashing the watermelon. Let's go to the property four. Some solids are grainy. And when we talk about grainy, this is what we are talking about. Like this, grainy. This means that it is made up of tiny particles like rice. These are grains of rice and sugar. So some solids 
are grainy. It will not be complete. They are made up of particles. So let's look at solids that are grainy. Can you give me an example? Think about some example. Solids that look like what you see on your screen. What you see here. They are, they are like small, small, small particles. Can you think of something? Okay, let's go through and see whether you had the answers right. So sugar is one. Sugar is grainy. Sugar is grainy, but they are solid. Sugar is grainy. But they are solid salt is grainy but they are solid they are made up of small 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 particles they are grainy but they are solid sand is grainy small small particles but they are also solid small small particles so not all solids are like our dresses a block or a stone or a book some are also grainy like this made up of small small particles because you can hold them remember we said that solids you can hold them you can hold them good you also have gary gary is also solid but they are grainy made up of small 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 particles and you can hold them you can hold gary i can take some gary with my hand and then put it in my mouth i can hold it so that is so, so remember that some solids are grainy. Let's go to property 5. Solid takes space and that space is called volume. Solid takes space and that space is called volume. So Kate, I have a table here. I have space on this table. I have space on this table and I want to pack things on this table. I don't want one object to be on top of the other i want all the objects i want to pack to be on this table and i have four objects three boxes and one bag of sachet water i want to pack it we are explaining the fact that solids they take space so the first box is here so it has taken some space the second box is here so how many boxes can I fix here? The last one is here. There's, do we have more space to put another box? I have the sachet water here. I also want to put it on the table. Where can I put it? Where? Yes, there is no space. So that means that solid, they take space. They take space. So these three boxes have taken the space on the table. So right now I have no other space to put this unless I put it on top of one. But I don't want to put it on top of one. I want, I want to put it on the table. So that means I have to take one box down and then I'll put the water here. So remember that solid, they take space. Solid takes space. When you are going to school, there's a space in your school bag. You put your books inside and it will get to a time. The bag will be full. You can't put anything inside again. So solid takes space. Solid, they take space. So remember that. When you have fridge in the house, a fridge is a solid. And all the food that you put in will take all the space in the fridge. So that you can't put more food. If you put more food, you can't close the door of the fridge. So remember that solid, they take space. Good. And remember that that space is called volume. The space that solid takes is called what? Volume. So remember. Property 6. A solid does not move. A solid does not move. It will be at the same place. You may pull it or push it to change its place so a solid does not move so what i have in front of me here is solid it will never move until i push it or i pull it to any direction so a solid does not move so if i put it down it will be there it will not move Unless I push it or pull it, like what you see on the screen, this box is a solid. Unless you push it or you pull it, it will be at the same place. That is why 
when you have your television on a TV stand, it will be at the same place, it will not move. All the chairs or the stuffing chairs at your hall, at your daddy's hall, they are the same place. They do not move because solid, they do not move unless you push it or you pull it. So remember, solid do not move. It will be at the same place unless you pull it or you push it. Good. Good. Kids, we are almost at the end of the lesson and today we looked at solid and the properties of solid. When you talk about properties, we are talking about what solid have. That when you see it, you will know that, oh, this is a solid. When you have a shirt at home, and your junior brother or your elder brother sees the shirt, your brother will know that, oh, this shirt belongs to Kwame. It belongs to Kobna because it is your property. They know it belongs to you. So that is what properties are. And we looked at some properties that solids are hard. Some are soft. Solids are hard. Some are soft. Solids have their own shape and sizes. They have their own shape. And size it may be circle it may be triangle it might be a cone like the heart it may be a rectangle they have their own shape and sizes sizes a solid may be big or small and then also remember that their shape and size will never change unless you do something to it by using a hammer by using fire like the candle by cutting using a knife or scissors or by squashing it like how the car squashed the round watermelon. So they have their own shape and sizes. The shape and size will not change until you do something to it. And by using hammer, fire, knife or scissors, or by squashing it, then the shape and size will change. Solids do not move unless you push it or you pull it. They remain at the same place. Solid some solids are grainy, like the sand, like the sugar. They are like small, small particles, as you saw. Small, small particles, like the sugar, like the salt, like the sand, like the rice. They are all grainy. And then solid takes up space, and that space is called volume. They take up space. So this tablet here has taken space on this table. And this space it has taken on the table it's called it is called volume it is called volume so these are the properties of solid we talked about in this lesson now kids let's test ourselves to see whether you paid attention and you understood the lesson the property of solid shown below is so you look, you see a person here pressing a, a solid down up down so if a solid is like this is it hard is it grainy small small particles or it is soft what do you see here is this solid hard grainy small small particles or it is soft good it is soft soft you can just press it down and up you can even squeeze it because it is soft some solid are soft good the property shown below this small small particles how do you call it is it grainy is it soft is it hard this one this property is it grainy is it soft is it hard good it is grainy this is sugar sand is grainy rice is grainy so we call grains of rice so it is grainy some solids are grainy good the object shown the object below show that some solids if you look at these objects what comes to your mind does this tells you that some solids are strong some solids have shapes some solids are soft what is when you see these things what comes to your mind my children what comes to your mind does it tell you that solids are strong solids have shapes solids are soft good solids have shapes because we have round here we have rectangle here we have square here we have a cone shape here this tells you that solids have shapes very good 
Four, the balls filling the container below shows that solid. So we have a container, empty container, and then we fill balls inside. What are we learning here? Empty container, nothing inside, free space, and then balls we fill in with balls. What is this telling us that solids are small, solids are soft, solids take up space? Great, solids take up space. So they have taken the space inside. This is an empty space, but when we pour the balls inside, it took the space of this small container very good now let's look at the next one solids can change shape and size when something is done to them they have their own shape and size but when something is done to them their shape will change their size will change children is it yes or no when i hammer solid when I cut solid, when I use heat, it changes the size of the solid. Is it yes or no? Yes. Good. Yes. So, solid will not change unless we do something to it, like this one. Yes, you have done well. And these are what we call properties of solid. Properties. So, right now, when you hear solid, you know what makes them solid. What makes them solid. So you cannot see water and you call it solid. Can you hold water in your hands? Water does not have shape. So this will help you to know. Can you say water is soft? No. They also have their own properties and you look at them. So these properties that we did today will help you to know what object you can call solid. What object you can call solid. If you go to your ma mother's kitchen, there are so many items and objects there. Some are solids. So right now that you know what solids are, that you can hold them, they have shapes and all that. When you enter your mommy's kitchen, I believe you can bring out all items there that are solid. Very good. You have all done well. You have all done well. And before we leave, let me leave you with this homework. So answer the following with yes or no. So question one. Children, some solids are hard and some are soft. Yes or no? You underline. If it's yes, you underline. If it's no, you underline. Two, solids have fixed shapes. Solids have shapes. If it is yes, you underline. If it is no, to you underline. Solids do not move. Solids do not move. If it is yes, you underline. If it is no, you underline. Some solids are grainy. That is, they are made of small, small particles. If it is yes, you underline. If it is no to, then you choose no. And then last one, solids do not have volume. That is, they do not take space. If this is a solid, if I put it here, it will not take any space. I can put something still on the table. Is it yes or no? I told you that the space a solid takes is called volume. So solids do not have volume. Is it yes or no? If it is yes, you underline yes. If it is no, you underline no. I'll give you some few minutes to put this homework down.
Hello Kate, you are welcome back. And I believe you were all able to write the homework down. Today we looked at properties of solids. And I believe you have learned something new today. Children, anytime you go to school, make sure from morning to afternoon you close. Make sure you will learn something new every day. Do not put your bag at your bag like a parachute. Going to school filled with books, you go to school without learning anything new and then you come back. Make sure anytime you go to school, you learn at least something new for the day. And I believe in this lesson, you have learned something new today. And you have added it to what you know. Until I come your way again with another interesting science lesson. This is your teacher, Ernest Atto Benzo. Bye-bye. will save the children of the day will it be you will it be you who will save the children of the day will it be you will it be you we're all God's children yeah we're all God's children yeah We're all God's children, yeah. We're all God's children, yeah. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Will say of the Lord, He shall be my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the precious pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day nor by the destruction that lays waste at noonday a thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you only with your eyes so you look and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord who is your refuge even the most high your dwelling place no evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give you wings and charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up. These you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon thee, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He 
shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him when in trouble.